Well, while he was running, uh, Barack Obama was heard uh, to say that um, he would bankrupt our coal industry. Now, I don't doubt uh, Washington's ability to bankrupt almost anything um, in, the, in the United States, uh, but, uh, but, but China is currently adding 100 gigs of coal electricity a year. Um, that's one entire United States worth of coal consumption every three years. There is no end in sight, and there are other countries uh, all across the globe following exactly in its footsteps. Uh, so let me say here quickly uh, where I end up and then uh, try and tell you uh, how I get there. We rich people of the planet can't stop the other five billion poor people from burning a couple of trillion tons of carbon that they have within easy reach. We can't even make any real dent in global emissions because the emissions are growing too fast. They involve too much involvement by very poor people who can't easily change their ways. And because those poor people are part of the same global economy as us. And if we are foolish enough, which we could well be, we will let carbon worries send our jobs to their shores and they will grow even faster and carbon emissions will grow faster still. Now, it should go without saying we don't control global supply of carbon. Ten countries ruled by thoroughly nasty people control 80% of the world's oil, a trillion barrels currently worth $50 trillion at current market prices. Now, if I told you that there was that value in gold where it actually is, where the oil actually is, you would scoff at any suggestion that anything we could do, no matter what we spent, could force those people to keep that oil in the ground. It's all they've got. They will drill it. They will pump it. They will find a market, and somebody will burn it. Um, poor countries all around this planet are sitting on a trillion tons of readily accessible coal. It's all they've got for energy beyond the other great carbon reservoir of the planet, which is the rainforests and the soils, which they also, by and large, control. They will squeeze the carbon they can out of cheap coal, coal cheap forests, and cheap soil um, because um, that's what's there, unless they can get something even cheaper than that. And that, as I shall discuss shortly, is going to take some doing. Um, we no longer control demand for carbon either. Um, the five billion poor people are already the main problem, not us. If you have heard otherwise, you have heard wrong. Um, collectively, the poor already emit 20% more greenhouse gas than we do. Uh, we burn a lot more carbon individually, of course, but they have a lot more children. Their fecundity has beaten out our gluttony, and the gap is now widening very fast. Uh, uh, chi China, not the, China, not the United States, is now the largest emitter of greenhouse gas on the planet, and it will soon be joined by others. It's only a matter of time. And finally, the poor countries have made perfectly clear that they are not in, uh, interested at all in spending what uh, a low-carb uh, diet would cost. They have more pressing problems. So um, it really does come down to this. Uh, first, can we give the world something cheaper than carbon? The moonshot law of economics says why, yes, we can. Uh, if we just really put our minds to it, it will happen. Atom bomb, moon landing, energy, you name it. No, not this time. Um, fossil fuels are very cheap because they concentrate a lot of energy in a small space. You find a mountain of coal and you can just shovel gargantuan amounts of energy into the boxcars. Uh, renewable fuels like uh, sun and wind are much harder. Windmills are now 50-story skyscrapers, yet one windmill generates a piddling two megawatts. A jumbo jet needs 100 megawatts to get off the ground. Uh, Google is building 100 megawatt servers just to move bits around. Uh, meeting New York City's total energy demand would require something like 13,000 windmills spill, uh, spinning at full speed, or more like 50,000 windmills uh, scattered all over the state because you've got to have enough to be sure enough of them are in the windy spots. Uh, uh, what was your mayor thinking when he suggested that you might just tuck them into Manhattan? I mean, uh, th that, kind of, that kind of thinking betrays a very common view that, uh, a, a, in fact, it betrays a profound ignorance about how difficult it is to get huge amounts of energy out of these very dilute, uh, thin forms of fuel like uh, sun and wind. Renewable technologies are not moving down the same plummeting cost curves that we've seen in our laptops and our cell phones. Uh, when you replace conventional with renewable, everything gets bigger, not smaller, much, much bigger, and costs 
get higher, not lower. Um, China and India won't trade three cent coal for 15 cent wind or 30 cent solar. And if we force those expensive technologies on ourselves, we will certainly end up doing more harm than good. Tw if 20 percent of the planet buys much less carbon, the other 80 percent will be delighted to buy it at a lower price. Um, the real jobs will go where the energy is cheap, just as they go where the labor is cheap, because manufacturing and heavy industry require so much energy. And in a global economy, you can't possibly compete if you're paying two or three times uh, as much as your competitors for an essential input. Green jobs means Americans paying other Americans to chase carbon while the rest of the world builds power plants and factories. But the rest of the world is less efficient than us and less careful. A massive transfer of carbon and industry and jobs from us to them will raise carbon emissions. It will not lower them. So uh, unless we are going to ask the Pentagon to take charge, and good luck with that, um, we don't have the power to deliver any lasting reduction in global carbon emissions at all. Uh, whatever we might achieve in the very short term at home, um, we can't control the global supply of carbon. We can't control the five billion poor people who desperately want to burn it and who already control more of the demand than we do. And we can't control the flight of jobs and industry to where the energy is cheap. Um, frantically chasing the impossible and falling flat on your face doesn't make things better. It often makes things worse, and it's never worth the money.